Walgreens, do pharmacists hate working there? Is it the corporate strategies? Is it the metrics? Is it the toxic work environment or toxic bosses? Or is it another capitalist hate story? Because in a recent Walgreens report, they said that they made over $26 billion, not in revenue, in profit. And yet despite that, they are closing or reported to at least be closing thousands, if not over 2000 stores in the United States. Walgreens is a major drug chain store in the United States, and it's under the Walgreens Boots Alliance, if you haven't heard of that name before. It employs over 240,000 members, technicians, cashiers, pharmacists, and other support staff across its 9,000 stores in the United States alone. Fun fact about Walgreens, almost 80% of Americans live within a five miles of a Walgreens store. That's pretty powerful to be across the United States that way. But why does it have a negative reputation or is it negative? What do pharmacists think about this company and what's its future and impact on the profession? Why do news articles break out like every month about what is happening at Walgreens and the negative things that employees are saying about the company? We're gonna explore some of these questions like, what is Walgreens doing about this? How did it get to this point? What are the challenges that they're currently facing that maybe you should be considering if you are wondering about taking a job from Walgreens? By the way, I'm Alex. I'm the founder of The Happy Farm D, and we help pharmacists get job offers or six months or less. And they're jobs that they actually want. And yes, we've helped pharmacists leave Walgreens, but also get into it because there's two sides to every story. Walgreens was founded in 1901 by Charles Walgreen. They set up shop in Chicago, and interestingly enough, they actually grew by uh, selling alcohol during the prohibition period of history, which I think is fascinating because they actually would sell it more than what the bootleggers were selling it for, and that made a pretty penny for them. In the 20s, they did other things too to attract people to the store, like selling malt ice cream, which is a uh, pretty nuance for a pharmacy to do back in that time. By 1925, they grew to about 65 stores, spanning all the way to Minneapolis and St. Louis. But they became a real force of nature in the 1970s, when in 75, they recorded the first ever $1 billion in revenue. And they opened the thousand store at that time. 1991 began a shift in Walgreens strategy where they began to buy services and other smaller chains across the United States. They had this vision of creating a brand that would go from coast to coast. Throughout the early 2000s and 2010s, they have been buying up startups, major corporations, from companies like Village MD to Care Centrics to Summit Health, City MD, Home Infusion and Specialty Pharmacies, which has led them to today where they have over 9,000 stores. An incredible number and incredible feat for one organization. And I think that sets the stage for what Walgreens really is. It's not really a pharmacy. It is a profit driven company with shareholders in the billions of dollars. If you go to any pharmacy convention or just talk with pharmacists that work in this field, everyone kind of knows that pharmacy is almost treated like a loss leader. The store itself selling things like alcohol and cigarettes uh, make more money than the pharmacy does at times. So despite this growth, why are all these news stories breaking out? What's going on here? Given this journey to where Walgreens is today, what is its path for its future? Where is it planning to go? Well, its current status is that it's very profitable company. In 2023, the company reported a $26 billion profit. Now to put that in perspective, $26 billion is the approximate GDP of Albania or Armenia. Now to put that amount in perspective, the countries of Albania and Armenia, which have millions of people, that's their GDP. That's how much money, that's the entirety of the money that the country made. That's not even the profit, okay? A single company is making more in profit than two countries. Now, I won't lie to you that this is incredibly complex and these, these reports are even sometimes like fudged with numbers, but still, this is an incredible amount of money. And yet despite that, Walgreens is currently predicting that there will be closing potentially 25% of their stores in the United States as they report to be underperforming and not profitable. 
And I think this leads to a key challenge and one of the reasons why pharmacists say they struggle with this company, that it's more about number care than it is about health care. Because if you're making $26 billion in profit, and yet you're wanting to close a healthcare service for people who may not have another pharmacy in the area, and that may or may not be true, but this will create pharmacy deserts very likely for potentially thousands, if not millions of Americans across the United States. And Walgreens also points to other problems that are making this the perfect storm of problems because they also talked about that there are pharmacist shortages happening. And I've broken that down in another video. You can check it out. We'll put a link in the description where this isn't just true at all. There's not a shortage of pharmacists. There's a shortage of pharmacists willing to take the jobs that these people are providing. And to prove my point, they're providing like fifty, seventy thousand dollars sign on bonuses for many of these jobs, but they're not taking them. There's plenty of candidates. They just don't want to work in retail. But why? Well, the work environment itself, we know to be toxic. Roughly 50 to 60% of pharmacists working within retail are burning out. This is not just Walgreens. This is almost every retail section. So the environment is causing all of these working conditions to be incredibly stressful for people on the front lines. They don't have proper staffing. They don't have proper adequate replacements. They don't have uh, support from their leaders or training. If you were to look at Glassdoor's review of their senior leadership, it's one of the lowest scores. You put all these factors together and you have a very disgruntled workforce. On top of that, they also report a high turnover rate, thus increasing the cost of pharmacy just trying to run its operation. You talk to any pharmacist today and they're, one of their number one complaints is getting reliable technicians. And that is, of course, of just because of how low that they're being paid. This in turn is leading into consequences like pay reductions and lack of incentives. In November 2023, Walgreens announced that they were no longer to be giving out incentives for that year, despite the $26 billion in, in, in profit. Another key issue that they have faced and that pharmacists have been lamenting ever since it was decided that store managers run the show. And often store managers don't have a college education, let alone a pharmacy background. And so imagine being a pharmacist, a doctorate level professional, having to be told what to do about an organization that they don't really understand or know well enough to be able to run the store and do a good job. It's tough. From Walgreens perspective, they also point to lots of losses recently as they reported the Village MD startup buyout didn't really work out. And on top of that, they also are paying a lot of bills from the IRS, like $2.7 billion and another $6 billion in losses in early 2024. I think it's a little bit naive of me to say that this is just because of, of greed or capitalism. Let's be honest, if they're making $26 billion in profit, Walgreens has incredibly intelligent people working on this problem of ensuring its sustainability, longevity, and natural growth. And of course, making sure that the people at the end of all of this, the stockholders are making their money back. If you're considering a healthcare career and you want to be a pharmacist, and I think you really have to have a uh, meeting of your soul because this is a company that very clearly is about the bottom dollar. And that's what they should do. It's a business. It isn't a nonprofit or a charity. So it needs to be focused on growth and innovation and beating its competitors in order to make more money. However, healthcare is about helping others. And sometimes in order to help others, we have to sacrifice a little bit in order to help someone. Even if it's something as simple as just helping someone on the side of the road, right, fix a tire. That's a sacrifice of time. But in terms of a profession, pharmacists joined this because they were attracted by the concept of helping others with their knowledge and expertise. And this leads us to the working conditions problems that pharmacists are facing, not just in Walgreens, but in almost every retail chain setting. Many of the news articles that talk about pharmacy walkouts, they say that it's the conditions, it's the metrics, it's the unrealistic expectations that they are placing on these professionals in order to just do their job. Whenever we're working with a retail pharmacist, they're almost abhorrent to the idea that there's something redeeming about the retail setting. 
But one of the beauties of coaching is that we're able to like nail down exactly why they joined this profession. And almost unequivocally, everyone says, I actually like helping people when I have the time, when I don't feel like I'm running without, you know, my head cut off, when I feel like I'm actually enjoying what I can do and make the time for the patient, then I'm happy. But I'm very quickly reminded I have three people waiting on the phone to talk to me. I have to call this insurance company. I have to prove this many scripts. I've got my boss yelling down at my throat because these metrics were missed. There's just so many things piling up that make it so hard for a pharmacist to do the very thing that they want to do, help people. I'd like to talk about a few of the things that Walgreens has done well. One of the things they implemented in recent years was a lunch break. Now, if you're not in pharmacy, that may sound like, what, what? What? No, no, all right. I know that sounds bad. Yes. For decades, retail chains were not allowing pharmacists or staff to take breaks. Walgreens was one of the first major chain stores that allowed these pharmacists to take breaks. Now, you could take breaks in practically almost every other setting from independent pharmacies to hospitals to almost any other job, but they were holding out. I'd like to recognize Illinois Pharmacists Association for being a part of that initiative. Retail pharmacy is the face of pharmacy. And everyone knows a pharmacist practically because of the need for medications in this, in this society. How does Walgreens match up to its competition? Well, CVS is still the big dog in the room. $357 billion in revenue compared to Walgreens, nearly less than half of that is 139. They have about the same amount of stores, but CVS has multiple other types of businesses outside of just what they're doing in pharmacy. So this isn't a one for one comparison here in terms of these numbers. Rite Aid is also there, but as you can may have already guessed, they're, they're closing soon, they're going bankrupt. And Walmart, also not fair to compare because it's a giant chain, they sell many other things than just pharmacy, but it kind of gives you a picture, a snapshot of where things are at. CVS has been growing almost 10% year over year in terms of its annual rate of revenue, which is a good sign for its growth. But again, lots of pharmacists report kind of the similar problems going on as compared to Walgreens. Despite this competition, I believe its greatest challenge is its workforce. Whether it's not being able to keep great technicians to support pharmacists in doing their work, or just the fact that they're not able to entice pharmacists to take these jobs other than bribing them with bonus money. I think their corporate policies and procedures and pressure is putting way too much on these people who want to help others. From all of my research on job burnout, on job satisfaction, on what makes pharmacists happy, the things that Walgreens is struggling with is letting pharmacists have the autonomy to do their jobs, providing realistic expectations for pharmacists to handle during their workday, to provide adequate staffing, whether it's pharmacists or technicians or other support staff, and creating an environment where pharmacists actually feel supported to do the work that they want to do. Glassdoor's company review reveals a lot about the company. Their score out of five was a 3.1, not great. And that's confirmed by over 33,000 people. If you dig into some of the categories here, it's senior management is one of the worst at 2.8. We all know the saying that people don't leave bad jobs, they leave bad bosses. And unequivocally from the pharmacists that I've spoken with, that is a continuous theme for why pharmacists want to leave this store. It is because they don't feel supported, they feel way too much pressure, they feel manipulated. And you know, that's not to say that every manager within Walgreens is bad. If you're a Walgreens manager, you're probably curious about what others are saying. So you're doing way more than your, your other colleagues. The new CEO of Walgreens is Tim Wentworth. Don't know the guy from Adam, but only 40% approve of him, whatever that means. Tim gets a base salary of $1.5 million in annual average, plus bonuses that's tied to corporate stocks which in turn only incentivizes him to, you know, do a great job with the company and cut people so that ultimately he makes more money. Makes sense. If you look at anything posted online from anonymous users talking about Walgreens, you will 
rarely find something positive. If you go to Walgreens stores subreddit, you'll see that the slogan was the old one from I think before 2015, which was be well, dot, 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 oh well. One pharmacist just a few months ago said, been with Walgreens for 20 years, and this is the worst it has ever been in my career. Another person said, this job is killing me. Everything we know about burnout research and poor working conditions indicates higher risks of depression, anxiety, suicide, cardiovascular mortality, hospitalization, divorce. It's not, it's not good. <laughs> if you're considering working in these conditions, please know that this is a potential risk for you. But I do wanna highlight some positive things that people are saying. One pharmacist said, I don't mind it and I don't find it stressful. If you have the right mindset, it can be a great job that pays the bills. Another pharmacist said, the job itself isn't bad. It's when hours get cut or corporate starts making up some BS or your coworkers make you the bad environment. I think it's highly specific. I know great people at this place. I've met them, I've talked with them. These are passionate people who love what they do, they love their teams, and they support them well. So if this is something that you're getting into, I implore you, please do your due diligence to find out who the manager is and what are they like. Don't find this out in the interview because <laughs> they're best selves. Because even on LinkedIn, people are making their voices heard. I saw one post from Tim Wentworth, the CEO of the company, and pharmacists were pretty spicy. One former pharmacist from Walgreens said, listen to your employees and you'll know exactly what to do. But we know that you personally don't care as you're getting a hefty salary plus stock options. Ugh. The question remains, what's the future for Walgreens and will it ever change for pharmacists? Will it actually treat people well? According to some business experts, the online market has lots of room for growth. They predict that stores like Walgreens and CVS will be shifting a lot of their marketing efforts into online in order to drive sales. We know that Walgreens has made initiatives to invest in things like wellness programs, whether they're being used or not is to be seen. We also know that they've laid off some metrics that they previously were living very rigidly by, but have waxed in their demands for. If you've ever gone to a Walgreens pharmacy, you probably have experienced yourself and been asked, do you want a shot? <laughs> Especially if it's flu season. If you're considering working for Walgreens, I really want you to consider a few factors before accepting a job offer. One is the turnover rate. If a store or district has a high turnover rate, there's a reason for it. There's a reason why people are leaving. If they're offering you a heavy bonus, ask why. Maybe it is hard to get someone to this location because it's the middle of nowhere, Alaska, but maybe it's a bad place. Maybe it's a store that gets robbed. If you're curious about any of the resources that I've shared during this video, you can check out some of the links in the description where I've shared that. And thank you to those that have contributed to this video. If you work at Walgreens, would you recommend it? I think everyone has made their voice very clear. In fact, it's why I also believe the number of student applications has dropped significantly over the last 15 years. Everyone's found out. There's not a lot of jobs in clinical, most of them are in the community space, and the work environment there is difficult. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit dislike, and let me know what I should be covering differently in these company reviews. Thanks for watching this, and until I see you in the next video, stay curious and take care.